Hi friends, Sarah Millerhouse here today and I am excited to share another layout with you that I created for the Shimmers Paints Design Team. I am going to be using the April color kits and part of the April paper kit. Uh, so I started with Foundations White Mixed Media Cardstock and I am using a Pear Tree Cut Files stencil. It's just a whole bunch of little circles and texture paste. So I'm using the Ranger Opaque White Texture Paste. It's one of my favorites to use. And I'm spreading that on with a palette knife, but I'm doing it pretty generously. I do use washi tape to tape everything down so it doesn't move on me while I'm working. And um, I let it dry overnight. So this is the next day I'm gonna be adding color. So that first color I added on is the Vibes Deep Blue Sea from the April Color Kit, and it is gorgeous. I love that blue. So I just, um, that the texture paste had dried overnight, and so I added water, and then I added the spray, and am spreading it around with my paintbrush, and moving my paper around and turning it so it gets good, nice, even coverage. And the paintbrush helps me just make sure it doesn't run in places that I don't want it to run. Like I want to keep the top half wa pretty white. So um, then I'm going to be going and adding the Inklings Me and Blue. So by adding this in, I'm adding a whole bunch of shimmer and shine. And that um, it's a beautiful combination. So here I did uh, sprinkle some on and then spread it with my paintbrush. And now I'm going back and just adding splatters because I kind of want it to pool in places and, and add some dimension to that background. Adding back on a little deep, more deep blue sea because I kind of want it to be splotchy. I don't want it to be like an even one color. I want it to be splotchy kind of like the ocean. Like when you're looking at the ocean and the sun is shining on it and you're getting shimmer and shine and sparkle. I want all of that to happen. So there, what I did is I opened up that deep blue sea and with my paintbrush just splattered some on so it made it even more kind of splotchy in places. And then this that I'm adding now is gonna be the Inklings Ice Sage and that's also from the April Color Kit. So that's more of a, it's really like a, sil a silver that has like a touch of, touch of green in it, but you can't really tell that it's got a touch of green in it on the way that I've done it here mixed in with all that blue. It just kind of looks like a white, like a silvery white, and it's beautiful. So there it is. You can see dried. So I did let that dry for a while before I started doing anything with it. And now I'm going to be adding another, this is another Pear Tree Cut File stencil. So this is the one that's um, like, a, I think it's called Starburst. But I'm only going to be using half of it for the rays of the sun. So I am going to use um, my ink blending tool and just a little bit of Distress Oxide to start the rays. So that's going to be on the background. And most of this color is going to be covered up. But I did want there to be some kind of medium there so that when I start spraying on the next layer of color, it has something to blend with. I love there to be variations in color. So this is really easy so far. So just stencil spreading on some color I did not go all the way to the edge because I didn't want there to be like a square I didn't want it to look like there was a square edge around that so um, I did put down this piece of paper and use washi tape to tape off and mask where I do not want that yellow to mix with the blue and the yellowish orangish color that's beautiful is a vibes um, and it's called here comes the sun and that is also from the April color kit and then what I'm adding on right now is just from my stash. This is um, Shimmer's Limoncello. So that's just that was just in my stash, and I wanted there to be some kind of splotchy color in the rays of the sun as well. And so I wanted it to be something that had a drastic um, contrast. So it's a very light yellow, and it does make a difference on that final layout. So I pulled that stencil up while it was wet and sat it off to dry. I did that because I didn't want my stencil to be ruined. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have left it on there to dry. Um, 
there's no reason that you can't. I just don't like it to sit on my stencil for too long. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am pulling patterned papers. So that plaid, that blue plaid is from the April paper kits. And then I'm also mixing in papers, patterned papers from the Blooming Wild collection by Paige Evans. That's her most recent collection. So I coordinated the colors that I pulled out of that collection with the papers that I was using from the April color kits. And I am adding some dry adhesive and then also wet adhesive and you're gonna see me staple also because I'm gluing down to lots of medium and it did have a hard time sticking on that background. So um, you'll see here in a second, I'm gonna grab my stapler. So I just tore the edges. I wanted it to be very um, sort of distressed and rustic looking. There's where I'm stapling. So I'm just stapling those on to give me a good foundation. And I'm just tearing these edges and then going back and distressing them even more. I don't want anything about this to look perfect. So I really kind of wanted it to look like water, sort of, and then the sun shining on the water. So you'll see what I mean here in a minute. I might be the only one that thinks it looks that way, but in my mind, that's what I was going for. The thing that the, the paper does also is it kind of helps cover up where I have that, the sun rays and the water are, where they're meeting on the page. I'm covering up that transition. This is another, the striped paper, I love the striped paper. This is another paper from the April paper kits or color kits paper collection. And then this last one that I'm adding is also from that paper kits collection. I'm just tearing those a little bit more because I wanted them to not totally cover up the layer below it. <laughs> And that'll be just peeking out because my photo is going to go right there in the center. So I did go back. I felt like I had a little bit too much paper and not enough like rough edge. So I went and tore off some more and then distressed it while it was down on the paper. So now I've pulled out a bunch of things from the Blooming Wild collection and I'm going to go ahead and back my photo. I'm going to use a couple of layers of patterned paper to back that photo. So this picture is from a day we spent in Jamaica at, uh, I think it's called Dolphin Cove in Ocho Rios. So that was one of the first stops on our Jamaica trip was Ocho Rios. And so we spent this day swimming with dolphins and stingrays and sharks and all kinds of things so that was super fun and then I'm gonna add one more layer here and then I did take my uh, my blending brush and I don't even I didn't even put any more ink on it it was just the ink that was left over I went ahead and added that so that there wasn't such a distinct white um, like too vivid of a white in between those rays and so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and build my layers behind my photo. <clears throat> and these are just some of the journaling cards and things from the Blooming Wild collection. And then that's a chipboard frame from the chipboard sheet. And then I'm pulling out a few more things here some tags and some little cards because I'm going to build a big cluster <coughs> excuse me sorry I'm going to build a big cluster of layers behind my photo here in the center 
And that little tab says fun times. I thought that was perfect. I'm just trying to play around now and deciding where it's gonna all go. Here what I'm doing, and I just left this in to show you because I'm trying to make sure all of the layers are even. So that chipboard frame was pretty thick. So I added a little craft foam in the, just in the part where my photo was gonna sit so that it my photo didn't like dip down and crinkle and curl behind it. So, and then now I'm adding craft foam around where that, that frame was. So that all, like when I push on it in the middle of this layout, it's very flat and a very even surface. And then I did tilt my photo to be at the same, at the same angle as the paper. And here I did cut off, I'm gonna cut off each of the, like half of those tags so that the tags are just kind of poking, look like they're poking out from behind. But since I've already adhered it down, I can't go back and actually put the whole tag back there. So I just cut off part of it that I don't need and then add adhesive to it. And then this little circle was from the, also from the Blooming Wild collection. So I just took a ruler, so a straight edge and added the lines. I added orange lines and then I'm using blue ink to tie in the colors that are on the background. And I'm just journaling about our sweet day, swimming with all of the amazing creatures in Jamaica. And then that little word, it's a little foam, foam title piece that says magical. And my title, that's the first part of my title. And then I'm gonna add some more foam letters for the rest of the title. So I'm going to write the word fun under there. And again, I chose the letters on that, on that sheet of letters. I've chose the main colors. So like the blue, the yellow, and the pink that I've got on the layout. Those were my, that's my main color scheme. So those are the letters that I chose. Those are also from the Blooming Wild collection. <clears throat> and now I'm just gonna be adding some embellishments. This is my favorite part. I love adding <laughs> I love adding all the little details now. And these little circles, there's a whole package of chipboard circles that have patterns on them in the Blooming Wild collection. So I chose one of those and I'm kind of tucking it under there. And that I did, and I do end up going back and adding even more adhesive to that. Because it is hard to, once I, you have all that texture paste and all of those mediums on the background, it can be kind of difficult to get anything to stick to it. So. We'll be adding lots of adhesive to the back of those things that are glued down there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I did put a foam, a foam board behind my layout and I'm pulling out some thread and then I'm gonna poke some holes. This is super easy. So I went up under my cluster my photo cluster in the center so it looks like the thread is coming out from behind it and I'm just adding and I did that off camera so you can see there I added just one long 
line of thread in between each ray of the sun. And now I'm going and adding little bits of thread to each of those tags, coordinating with the colors on the layout. That pink heart I did pull off because it was bothering me. <laughs> it was too too much of a contrast down there and it was distracting me while I was working. So I did go back and add a blue heart instead of the pink heart. And that went better with that area of the layout. I wanted a little bit of a contrast so that it didn't get lost, but I didn't, the pink was too much of a contrast. So it's a little too loud. But I did use that pink card. I just put it up there on the corner of my photo. Now I'm going to pull out some shiny bits, I think. Yes. And I'm going to add one little cluster of yellow shiny little things up there in the top above that heart. And then a little blue cluster down below by the blue heart down, below, down at the bottom in the water. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use some pops of color from scrapbook.com just to kind of mix in. This just adds like a little bit more texture. As I've said before, my husband calls this puff paint. <laughs> Similar, but specifically for paper crafting. And then here's the close-up. So you can see all those details. I hope you've enjoyed watching the process. If you did, you can go ahead and give the video a like, tap the bell for notifications, and I love when you follow along. Any questions you have about anything I did, go ahead and pop them down in the comments and I will answer them. And as always, if you're placing a shimmers order with for any of the beautiful mediums or paper or anything like that, if you put Sarah Miller House in the comment section, you'll get a free gift. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.